Okay, so let's take a look at a double integral. And when you look at these, what you should do is think of them like nested integrals. For example, this integral here is inside the outside integral, which goes from say, there to there. The, out one you're, the outside one you're integrating with respect to x, and this inside one here, integrating with respect to y. So let's just take the integral out for a moment and let's take a look at it. And remember that y is the variable here. So those x's you see, while they look like variables, are not variables in this inside integral here. So I'm going to stretch the page a little bit. And I'm going to rewrite this one more time. Oops. Integral 1 to 2. I'm going to think of this as x times 1 over y plus, I guess we've got y times 1 over x dy. All right. So when we go to do our antiderivatives here, this first one, if y is the variable, but it's x times ln of the absolute value of y. Don't forget that. But the antiderivative of y is ln y. Don't forget your absolute value either. And then over here, 1 over x is kind of like your coefficient. And the antiderivative of that y term is y squared over 2. So I think I'll write it that way. 1 over x times y squared over 2. And this whole thing is getting evaluated between uh, 1 and 2. And there's lots of variables here, especially when we get into triple integrals. There'll be a third variable. So keep track of what variable you're working with. So this is an integral with respect to y, which means that these two things are y values. So let's go ahead and plug those in for y. Let's take our time doing that. So we'll get x ln of the absolute value 2, which is ln 2, plus 1 over x. And then I'm going to put 2 in there. I'm going to have 2 squared, which is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So times 2. We'll just hold it that way. Minus brackets. Plug 1 in for y. We get x times ln of 1. And then plus 1 over x times 1 squared, which is 1 over 2, which would give you 1 half. This is what we get. Something worth simplifying a little bit. Something you may have forgotten. The ln of 1 is 0. So that term goes away. Um, this term can be written a little bit more compactly. We can write that as 1 over 2x. Right? This term can be written as 2 over x. And that first term, there isn't really anything as much to do with that. So this whole thing turns into x ln of 2. You're going to have plus 2 over x. And then you're going to have minus 1 over 2x. Don't forget that this is negative either. Distributes onto both terms. Okay, let's go back up and remember what the outside integral was. The outside integral, you can see here, I'll trace over in purple. The integral from 1 to 4 to x. So x is our variable. And I've got to say, I'm kind of happy to see that because when I look here, I only see the x variable in this expression. There's still been a y variable in that expression, and I would have known there was an error. So here we go, integral 1 to 4, x ln 2 dx. And I think I'm going to write this as three separate integrals. Plus the integral from 1 to 4, 2 over x dx. Plus the, in oh, I should say minus, actually. Maybe on that one. So we have minus the integral from 1 to 4. Uh, I'm going to think of this as I'll just write this 1 over 2 x dx for now. Okay. Let's go through each one of these separately. So this first one looks a little bit scary, but in reality, ln2 is just the number being multiplied by x. So the antiderivative of that x term is going to be x squared over 2, and it's just getting multiplied by the ln of 2. So we're going to evaluate that from 1 to 4. So maybe I'll just finish this one up and then go about the rest of them. If I put 4 in here, I'm going to have 4 squared. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so I get 8 ln 2. And then if I plug 1 in here, 1 squared is 1 over 2, so then minus 1 half ln 2. So that's the value of the first integral. You could have some fun with that if you want. Like for example, there's a famous rule of log. It says the log of a to the c power, or the ln of a to the c power, the c times the ln of a. So I'm going to use that here to rewrite this as the ln of 2 to the 8th 
minus the ln of 2 to the 1 half. Okay. Um, okay for a minute here. Ln of 2 to the 8. I think that's 2 to the 6th. Let's just see if that's right, right? Or not. So it's 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. Each. 256. Wow, I got lucky there. So that's the ln of 256 minus uh, the ln of the square root of 2. And then there's a rule that says minus becomes division in the sense where right this way the ln of 256 uh, over square root of 2. So that just takes care of that first integral. I got two more to go. So if we look back up here, I have this next one, that one there. Integral 1 to 4, 2 over x dx. Integral 1 to 4, 2 over x dx. The integral of 2 over x is, is 2 times the element of actual value of x evaluated from 1 to 4. If I plug 4 in there, I get 2 times the element of 4. That's right, where it's 4 anyway. Minus 2 times the element of 1. So we already said that's 0. So this whole thing becomes 2 ln of 4. Think of as the ln of 4 squared or the ln of 16. That takes care of that question. Okay. Looking pretty good so far. And then that last problem here, this one, I didn't copy anything wrong. Nope, well, everything looks good. Just double checking. And then I have that last one, that underlying in green. So the integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over 2x. The integral 1 to the 4, 1 over 2x, dx. And you uh, can think of that as 1 half the integral from 1 to 4, 1 over x, dx. So that becomes 1 half the ln of the absolute value of x. Again, evaluating from 1 to 4. So by now you know that they're plugging. 1, it's going to be 0. So this is going to be 1 half the ln of 4. This is the ln of 4 to the 1 half power. This is the ln of 2. Okay, so at this point now, we have evaluated all three of these integrals. So the red, the blue, and the green. So let's see if I can remember all this. ln of 256 over the square root of 2. ln of 256 over the square root of 2. Then I'm going to have plus. It was plus originally, so it's easy to get confused here. There's a plus here and a minus here. So I'm going to do plus the blue one, so ln 16. Plus ln 16. And then I have minus the green one, minus the ln of 2. I suppose that's good enough. There's probably some more simplifying you can do. You always have that option. I think that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching.